welcome back. And uh, shout out to Jeremy from, I think, North Carolina? South Carolina, one of the Carolinas, I'm pretty sure. Jeremy, thank you for the comment. Good to hear from you, bud. He was one of my original subscribers way back when I had like, I don't know, probably less than 100 subscribers. So huge thanks for subscribing this long and uh, thanks for the, the comment. The comment was, how do I use, what are my side aims or what are my settings for down imaging? I've been filming all morning, so I'm a little, little tongue tied this morning. No, this is not a beer. This is sparkling water because I'm trying to give up pop. So we're gonna walk through my down imaging settings. Well, let's first talk about, let's talk about brightness. Your brightness is your sensitivity. I, I'm gonna kind of tap it around here. So if you notice when I tapped into auto high, it's about, I'm gonna guess it's like 90% right now. And you can see there's a ton of crap. Phytoplankton and maybe some small bait fish, but it's, it looks like it's a bunch of junk on my screen. If I go to auto low, cleared up quite a bit of it, but there's still a bunch of stuff in there that I don't really like. Um, so we're just gonna tap it down. Uh, we'll run it about 73%. Now the reason, the way I got that is it cleared up quite a bit of the screen, but it didn't clear up, it didn't fade any of my sensitivity on the bottom. Notice how there's the bottom and I can still see either rocks or maybe some fish sticking up on the bottom here. We'll zoom in some of this. See, these these are the rocks. Maybe there's some dead weeds. We're, it's October right now, so there, there could be some weeds that are just dead and just laying down. Um, but so there could be some fish down there too. Whoa, 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 there we go. There we go, brush pile. Let's screenshot this for you. There aren't any fish on that. There is zero fish on that brush pile. That brush pile is barren. Well, actually there might be a few fish. Might be a few fish right there. There's some bait fish up there. And notice how it went from rock, there's a rock area to this more of a softer bottom. There's actually sand silt mixed in right there. And then it, I'm kind of going up again to this rock. There's like two little points that stick out. So I'm just kind of bouncing back between them. But when I turn down the, the brightness or my sensitivity, I can still see these smaller bait fish, you know, on the bottom. That's, that's kind of what you want. You don't want to turn it down so much that you're not seeing fish. Uh, your contrast. Now this is, let's just try to default. Actually default doesn't look too bad. This is at 50%. Typically I run it a little bit higher because I'm fishing for crappie. Um, it really helps them pop out in terms of down imaging and side imaging. But when you crank it, let's say I crank it all the way up. So I crank this up to that. That's way too bright. You, you don't want it that bright. Let's run it about eh, up a little bit. So this, this is a good example right here. Real quick, this is a hard bottom to soft bottom transition. This hard bottom, this is rock, gravel, sand, transitioning to mud, muck, and silt. Oftentimes, you will find fish set up right on this break. In the, in the fall, we, our water temps just aren't there yet. Um, but in the fall, right on this break, you'll see a ton of crappie suspended out there. Typically mid fifties, once we get to the 50 degree water temp, that's where they're gonna be. Uh, but contrast, I like to bump it up a little bit from default. So 55 to 60, probably be a good, good area to put it in. Um, your range, right now I got it set on auto. The total depth of this lake is 34 feet or 36 feet, something like that. I will say if you're fishing in a reservoir or a lake and you're fishing for crappie, I personally would set it at 30 feet. I wouldn't go deeper than 30 feet for two reasons. And I mentioned this in my 2D sonar video. First reason is you're trying to cram so much data when you're fishing, let's say 50, 60 feet of water. And you're trying to cram so much data into a five, seven or nine inch screen, or if you got a bigger screen, that's great. But you're, you're trying to cram so much of the water crawl column into this area. And what, what these units do is when it sends down a signal, and let's say I'm, I'm going over this rock, this rock might be, let's say it's a foot wide. Well, this, air, this unit's granting, let's say 200 pixels or 100 pixels, I don't know the math exactly, but to this one rock. Now I'm in, I'm in, 
11 feet of water here, but there, at the time this was in about 15 feet. When you're in 60 feet of water and what the, the sonar tries to do, let's say you see a fish that's a foot long, it might only grant 20 pixels to that fish. If this is the fish as a sonar goes down and pings and tries to create kind of a, an arc or a blob, it might only give you 20 to 30 pixels for that fish if you're in 50 feet of water, if you have that full 50 feet set. When you shrink your screen, you're giving more pixels to that fish. So now the same fish that that sonar pinged against, maybe that has 50 or 100 pixels. You're going to be able to see that fish a lot easier. Um, so that's the first reason. The second reason is when you're crappie fishing or when I'm crappie fishing, I don't really target them deeper than 30 feet. I, I don't think it's there's a high mortality rate when you catch them deeper than 30 feet. So. I don't really think it's that ethical to fish for them deeper than 30 feet if you plan on releasing them. Now, if you plan on just catching them, uh, by all means, throw them on the ice. For us, it'd be throwing them on the ice when we're fishing them for deeper than 30 feet. For those of you down south, throw them in the live well, throw them in the boat. Um, as, as long as they're legal, of course, they gotta be the minimum size length. Here we go, we're coming over some, some brush piles here. So we talked about contrast, we talked about brightness, we talked about range. There's a zoom function you can have. I don't really use it. Um, so in our setup here, oh, scroll speed. I always get this question on scroll speed. I almost always have it set a default, which is five. Typically on a lot of websites, the Garmin, the Humminbird, um, and the Lowrance, they all recommend to go one number higher than what you troll. So typically my idle speed, if I'm going straight forward is, is probably around two and a half to three. So typically I set it to about four to five. Oh wait, there's a, uh, there's some fish. We got some fish. Scroll that back, screenshot that for you. And you guys can probably see it pretty well, but there are some fish. There's a log coming up here. There's a log going that way. There's some fish. There's some more logs and there's some fish tucked in there. They could be crappie, they could be bluegill, they're not all. There's probably some perch, there's actually some fish on the bottom here. Right there, and right there, and it looks like there's something right there, maybe a log. Um, and then there's actually, so people don't know this, on your down imaging, there's actually, it looks a little bit left and right too, because see, that was directly below the boat. This looks like it's just off to the, either the right or the left. And there's another, these are actually, this is actually a crib, but there's another crib right here, just outside of the cone angle. Um, typically on your side imaging, I'm running 840 chirp. They're typically with your down imaging, down imaging and side imaging for the older, if you got an older model unit, they run 455 and 800. Um, pick one, pick a frequency and get really good at, at what it's showing you. Just pick one. 455 is the widest, shows you the most. 800 is kind of in between and then there's the mega, the which this unit, I, I gotta update my transducer if I want that. But the, the mega is like 1.1 to 1.2 megahertz frequency, which is your narrowest of your down and side view frequency gives you the narrowest angle. But to go back to the squirrel speed, I, I keep it at five. Uh, the only time I'd crank it up is if I have 2D sonar and I'm jigging below the boat. I'm trying to get that jigging pattern on my 2D sonar. Um, color screen, This is, I run this orange crawfish. I was so used to the hummingbird setup that I, this is pretty much exactly like Hummingbird's default. So I was so used to it, I just went with this setup. There's a bunch of different options that you can choose from. Again, pick one that seems to show the most for you and, and just stick with it and get used to seeing what it's showing you. Um, that is honestly the biggest thing I can give you or biggest piece of advice. Everybody just wants to change a bunch of settings. Just get used to what you're seeing. You can adjust the gain and the contrast and stuff like that, but as far as frequency goes, uh, color palette, pick one and get used to seeing what it's showing you. Uh, let's talk about interference, TVG. Again, with a 2D sonar, I run my interference with low. If I'm on a river system, there's a lot of silt or stuff, a lot of current pushing uh, dirt and junk through the, the system. I might crank that up to medium or high. My TVG, I set at medium. Uh, basically, if you're fishing in shallow water, less than 15 feet, you want to set this at either off or low. 
If you're deeper than 15 feet, medium or high. Those are, that's, we're in the fall right now, it's October. Our crappie are in deeper water. So I'm gonna set it at medium. Um, let's see what else we got. That's my transducer. Yeah, that's, you know, down imaging is pretty simple. Pretty simple, not a whole lot to do with it in terms of contrast and brightness. There's really not a whole lot. Um, right now we're over a big mud flat right here. You can see there's not that much hard to return. If we can get back into some brush piles. Oh, we drifted way away from them. We get back into some of these brush piles here. I can show you again kind of that mixture, that hard to soft bottom return, or down imaging sonar, not too complex. I crank my contrast up just a bit, and my brightness, I got it at 73%. So for you Humminbird guys, I'd keep it at like a six or a seven on the brightness scale. I never have my range deeper than 30 feet. I could probably set it at auto because I'm not fishing deeper than 30 feet. And let's go this. As far as sewn up setter goes, scroll speed, I have it at five, which is my default. I run that orange crawfish pattern colored scheme. Pick a color scheme that works for you, okay? There's a brush pile in deep water right there. There might be a few fish on it. There's definitely some fish. Those are probably some bluegill. If they're that tight, typically the bluegill will hide inside these brush, these pieces of logs. If they're that tight to it. And here, there's a good transition line. See, it went from, I'll see if I can screenshot that again. It went from this softer return right here on the bottom to this, now it's a brighter return. That is that mud, muck, and silt transitioning to sand uh, or gravel or something like that. And in the, in the fall here, that is where these crappie are gonna start setting up. We, we're still at 65 degree water temp, so typically, They'll start pushing off. There's some crappie. Or, yeah, those are probably crappie. Once that water temp gets to that 50 degree mark, or you know, 50 to 50, upper 50s maybe, they'll start pushing off deeper water. There's some crappie right there suspended around that piece of brush. Screenshot that for you. Not a ton of them, but there's definitely fish there. So that is going to conclude the down imaging uh, kind of crash course. I'm just out here on the water going through the comments on YouTube. I do read them, so be sure to post a comment if you got any questions on this stuff. Uh, again, shout out to Jeremy for posting this comment. This is kind of my setup for down imaging and, and what I, contrast, brightness, all that stuff, what I use for settings. If you got any questions on it, post them in the comment section below. Um, if you got any questions on just sonar units in general, post them in the comment section, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. If you're in the marketplace for a sonar unit, I do have videos uh, highlighting different price ranges. I'll post those in the comment section or in the video description. I'll probably post them in the comment section as well. Um, but you can always message me on Facebook or Instagram if you got a question about buying, you know, what unit you should buy based on your price range. So I'm actually gonna get off the water now. I'm gonna go get some lunch. Appreciate you watching as always. We'll see ya.